How's it going everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Baking World Tour, where I try to bake something from every country in the world. And today, we're making something from Antigua and Barbuda. It's a Caribbean island nation, and they have this really unique treat over there. It's called bun and cheese. It's a delicious raisin bun, super sweet, soft and fluffy and fragrant, and they eat it with cheese inside. I was pretty skeptical at first, but this combination works perfectly. So let's get to it. Here's what we need. Some strong white bread flour, milk, yeast, some brown sugar, salt, soft butter, some raisins or currants, cinnamon, nutmeg, some vanilla syrup, and a bit of water and sugar to make syrup for brushing at the end. I'll also need a tray with some nonstick paper, a bowl, scales, dough scraper, a temperature probe, a brush, and a little pot for the syrup. Now kneading dough by hand warms it up quite a lot, so I'm going to use cold milk. Now grab your bowl, add the milk, the yeast, salt, sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, the vanilla, basically everything that goes in the dough except the butter and the flour. Because we are using a relatively large amount of butter, we'll work it in later on. Adding it to the dough too early will hinder gluten development and make it harder for us to knead the dough. You want to mix your ingredients well. You want to dissolve the large sugar crystals and hydrate the yeast before adding the flour. And once you've added your flour, grab your scraper and mix this to a dough. And this will be relatively dry to begin with, so you might want to continue on by hand. Mix it until it's one cohesive piece, then pop it out on the table and we can start kneading it. This dough is not sticky at all, so we use my regular kneading method. What I like to do is press down and forwards with the heel of my right hand then using the fingers of my left hand, I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand, then turn it and repeat. Continue kneading for around 3 minutes. This will give us a little bit of gluten development before we add the butter. And once the 3 minutes are up, stretch your dough out and slap on the butter. Now there's no pretty way of doing this. It will get messy, but trust me, you keep working at it, it'll start coming together. Don't worry about it. So add your butter, fold it in and squish it together with the dough. Really press it in. You try to force the butter into the dough. Squeeze it in your hands for around 30 seconds and then continue kneading just as you were before. And while it will be sticky and messy to begin with, it'll start coming together as you knead it. It may feel hopeless in the beginning, but trust me, it will come together. Continue kneading the dough for four more minutes. And make sure to pick up all of the butter, even the butter that's on your hands. And of course it goes without saying that your hands should be clean before you even attempt this. So why did I choose this recipe for Antigua and Barbuda? The thing is that there's not much wheat production on those islands, so I couldn't really find any traditional breads. The cinnamon bun is basically something that came from colonization, and the locals have their own unique take on it by having it with cheese. But of course you don't have to eat it with cheese, the bun itself is absolutely delicious. So once you're done kneading your dough, pop it in a bowl and take its temperature. Around 26 degrees Celsius is just about right for this. We will cover it up and let it rest for 15 minutes. We need to relax the gluten before we add the raisins. I find this method easier and more practical than kneading the raisins into the dough. You simply stretch the dough out, spread the raisins evenly and fold them in. And no, these raisins have not been soaked. And if you're not using your grandma's raisins from the back of the cupboard from five years ago, then you should probably not have to soak them either. So press the raisins in, spread them out nice and evenly. As you can see, I left a few behind. I'm gonna use them in a minute. Fold the top third of the dough down and then finish off the rest of the raisins. I keep saying raisins actually use currants, but either of them will work just fine. Now fold the bottom over the top part and fold the sides in. All we're trying to do is making more layers in the dough. And that's it. We can pop it back into the bowl and continue fermenting. If your dough came out warmer, it will take less time to ferment. If it was cooler, it will take longer. My first proof, I left it for one hour. And after the first proof, we want to give it a fold. Folding will help with degassing the dough, basically punching down. And we will also get to layer up the raisins more. It will also help us equalize the temperature of the dough. Let's say your kitchen was really warm and your dough was cool. It would have warmed up on the outside, but stayed cool in the middle. So with the folds, we are distributing our temperature evenly throughout the dough. And that'll give us an even fermentation. The folding is pretty simple. Flatten your dough out, make sure it's smooth side down, 
fold the sides over each other and fold the top down, turn it around, fold the bottom down as well. Get that nice little package back into the bowl, keep fermenting for one more hour. It's not going to be puffing up massively, because this kind of dough takes a while. But after the second proof, we can divide it. Weigh your dough ball and divide it into six equal pieces. And as always, after dividing comes the pre-shaping step. Because the dough is made up of many little pieces by now, we need to make it nice and uniform. So take a dough piece, flatten it out, fold the edge over the middle, going around the circle until the reach point where it started, and tighten it against the table, perhaps pinch the seam together at the bottom, and that's your pre-shaped bun done. And don't worry if a few raisins start popping out the buns. Simply fold them into the next bun. After the pre-shaping step, we need to cover them up and let them rest. We'll leave them for around 20 minutes. This will give the buns another chance to rise a little bit more, while also relax the gluten, make it easier for us to do the final shaping. So the final shaping is pretty similar to the pre-shape. Take your dough ball, place it smooth side down on the table, flatten it out, fold the edge over the middle, going around the circle to the reach point where it started. Then close the seam, place it on your tray with some nonstick paper, and continue on with the rest. Pre-shaping the buns first after dividing and then doing the final shape will ensure that they're all nice and smooth. And we all like smooth buns, don't we? Okay, so once you finish the final shape, we can cover them up, leave them to ferment. And these kind of buns, they definitely take a while to puff up properly. Contrary to popular belief, sugar actually slows down fermentation, plus the raisins weigh the buns down. So a good two to two and a half hours is what they need. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with dense buns. And during the final hour of fermentation, preheat your oven, 160 degrees Celsius with a fan on. These look nicely puffed up. When I poke them with my finger, they leave the nice indentation. Now they're ready for the oven. Pick off any stray raisins, otherwise they'll just dry out. They take a while to bake as well, around 30-35 minutes. You want to make the sugar syrup just before they're ready. Simply combine the sugar and the water in a pot and bring it up to the boil. This will give the buns a nice shine. If you don't want to make sugar syrup, you could also brush them with a bit of butter when they come out of the oven. But do brush them with something, because that really makes the color shine. Simple things like these completely transform the look of the bun. Yeah, and don't hold back, really go for it, use up all of the syrup. And that's how you make beautiful cinnamon buns, or cinnamon and raisin buns I should say. And they are perfectly fine as they are. You could also cut them open and eat them with some jam. But of course we gotta take them one step further. This is not gonna be an Antiguan bun without some cheese. But remember, always, whichever bread you're making, well, 99% of them anyway, you will let them cool down for a bit before you cut them open. If you cut your bread too early, it'll still be gummy inside and not very pleasant. Of course, if you're making a pizza, then you don't have to wait for anything, just tuck in. I'll let them chill down for around 20 minutes. Let's see what we got here. I mean, you can already see the texture as I'm cutting it. They're so soft and fluffy. Now to make them extra nice, what I'm gonna do is brush them with butter and quickly toast them in a pan. This is not necessary, but you know, I'm gonna go all out, why not? Last thing, add some cheese and tuck in. There's a certain cheese that they use called tasty cheese. That's tasty with two E's. And supposedly it's similar to cheddar. So cheddar is what I used. And it works so well. So what do you reckon? Would you try this? Have you tried this? What do you think of it? Let me know down in the comments. And if you have any questions or suggestions, also let me know. And don't forget to click that subscribe button. I've got many more delicious bread videos coming. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.